So here is, you know, those two settings, which that's the world I live in. Then, of course, we got our sort of more mid-range boosty guys, which you can just click on your bridge pickup, cut out some high end, and put that guy in and you got... So that's just, and what I love about on every EQ setting is that every note is even, notice that. This, this, this B string is not louder than my G string. Yep. That to, that's key for all of us working guys. You don't want everyone, everyone, the band feels like the bass drops out or the engineer feels like he's going to compress it more. So just having that evenness and, and really go throughout all these settings. You know? Big time. And then of course you have the super mid setting, which unless you're taking like a solo, might not be something you use a lot, but... bites but yeah. like I said smashing right back to where my homeland is play the same thing nice. which when you dig in it works yeah totally so that that's a that's a carbine and, and just only really playing with a few different the settings on my bass but barely and just really using the voice knob so the carbine with its great preamp and just this voice knob can do all these things and just because we have time and we don't have any lives if we're not gigging, <laughs> uh, we're going to delve further into these five tones I've been talking about. And I'm going to start out with a rock thing and bring out a couple of my rock axes and, and really make show you how the Mesa can really go there. We're back to delve further into the rock tone of the carbine, which is, uh, which is something that I like to do a lot, even if I play a more uh, contemporary country thing or, or a pop funk thing, is I like to dig out my, my 80s rock pick stuff, and, and I found that to be a really useful tone. A lot of people, you know, a lot of other guys in the band like the added percussive help. Right. And it, it, unless you have a, a brittle, too modern sounding amp, which then this thing won't sound good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or if you have a too sluggish, rumbly, low endy vintage amp, uh, the percussiveness won't come through. So tone is, you know, key, obviously. So here I am, again, scooping the crap out of the mix, both on the voice filter, and on the amp. So this is, uh, wow. this is, uh, you know, my standard vintage rock and roll bass with brand spanking new steel strings on it. And uh, uh, this is why it sounds with just a t tiny, tiny bit of distortion on it, if you don't mind throwing that on. So this is what I do. I help the amp out just a little. So here is, uh, here is my go-to rock tone. Beautiful. And, and I like the way you can hear all the high end, you can feel the low end and the punch, and you can feel personality. But there's not so much dirt that it becomes a heavy metal tone. Yeah, man. You know? Sort of my vintage pick tone. Here we are with, uh, again, my pick rock and roll kind of approach. And this is just a bass that, that sounds completely different in that heavier rock thing. But this is definitely for even heavier or more modern sounding rock stuff. People go, okay, your last kind of pick tone sounded more like a vintage amp. Well, check this out. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, that's a whole other that'll pick work. tone. Like a lot of guys are doing that right now. Nice. And uh, that'll, you know, like a tone, like say you listen to Nickelback or something like that, you'll definitely hear more of that kind of a thing. That's also doable with a carbine, 
without many changes. What I love about that tone is that it's extremely aggressive, but it, it, re, it retains its integrity. You know what I mean? It doesn't get wacky. It doesn't break up. It just completely punches through like a laser, which is huge when you're in a big stadium, you're a big theater, you, you're, you're with a band that's totally kicking. The bass has got to punch through, and that's what I love about these tones is that they're aggressive, but they retain their integrity. Yeah. And that doesn't always happen. Yeah. Things get lost. In and this, this tone is doable if you don't mind shutting off my distortion. Sure. Without my little distortion help, this is still a, mo a, a modern slash vintage warm tone. Still usable, very little change on the amp. Hey, can I do a question here? What yeah. happens if you add treble to that sound here without the Sans amp? Can well, I just hear you that? get a lot of that more clean. This is EMG pickups. Right. And this amp will really show a lot more of the EMG character. Right. It's a much more modern type of pick tone, really. Yeah. Beautiful, also. Like I said, one stop shopping. I don't need more amps. I like it. So here we are. Here's another animal. Same amp, same everything, pretty much. And I'm going to go for my brutal pick mid range dip that this amp did so wonderfully to just playing straight. No mid range bump. I want to run everything straight. This is an active bass, so. Of course, the amp has a nice little active passive switch. So let me just see, I got my settings right here. Yeah, there's an EQ on the bass and it's pretty much straight. So here we go. It's a very, very usable tone. Once yeah. again, here's my EQ. The amp sounds that good without messing with it. <laughs> it's like a little bit of bass bump. I think you have the deep pull. I have the deep, deep pull, right, which, right. of course, if we bypass that, we'll, we'll get more of a... Yeah, the pull deep actually, because it adds more low end, it gives you the impression that it adds more volume, which is pretty usable. Um, I like that pull deep. Can I pull it? Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> All right. You know what I dig is that... Yeah, man. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's you, heard the, you heard the tones I just did with that, with that black bass, really modern EMG. Nickelback-ish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, same amp, less than two seconds of fixing, and different bass, and th that's how well it responds to all these different styles. So that's what I dig about it.